So welcome back to Bolton Arena and uh, got with me Peter Hitchens. Uh, Peter, what are you expecting to see in this match? I'm expecting to see, as I said earlier, a, a very fast-paced match. Um, I think that one thing that you learn about as more you play is to dink, and that's just practice. That is hours and hours of doing it, and something that, that James and his partner haven't really been open to do purely because they haven't been playing as long, and therefore I expect them to use their tennis ability to the maximum ability, and therefore a lot of hard hitting, I presume. Great. Well, here we go then. Andrew Portlock at 0-0-2, and uh, immediately, even though Andrew's got tremendous power, we see uh, Darren Walsh blocking very comfortably and not really upset by that power. So, 0-0-1. Zero, zero, And a good interchange there. Great hands. So one zero one. And straight at the feet of the big man. Very difficult for big people to get down to their feet. So great targeting there from Daniel Wren. You also saw a slower return that gave him time to come up to the kitchen. Very good tactics. Unforced error. So, the error. One zero two. And here's Daniel using his touch, defending with touch, and just getting that ball to force James to reach over. Unfortunately, Daniel then coming through and instead of using his touch, firing long. It is hard though, when you run into that pace to try and get the ball down. He did well there. So 0-1-1. And there you see the power of Andrew Portlock. Almost no back lift and yet incredible weight. Now this is what I was hoping that we would see. Quality dinking. <laughs> Waiting for the man to make the mistake. Who's got the bottle to hang on for long enough? Oh, and unusually this time it's Daniel that tries to force it too early. The thing with James especially is that his consistency is incredible. It's very, very rare he will make a mistake. And for that reason, I think that it may be a lot of time Daniel or Andrew having to force the issue like that. Well played. And even though they seem to be relatively new to the sport, already we're seeing the tactical understanding of running outside the kitchen to come around and volley from James. Very skilled. The one thing you will notice with all four players as well, and as you go up higher, and get better in the sport, one thing is, is returns, how deep they all are. Every single time, because if you don't, you'll get driven out, and then as I said, you're in a lot of trouble from day one. So, it's very rare you'll see a return drop short, and if it is, it'll be punished long. Yeah, I'm also interested in how many of the players have got the skill of playing very deep and very slow to give themselves time to come up. Of course, yeah. And I think especially when you're trying to hit a third shot from that deep, it's yeah. incredibly difficult to do consistently. Yeah. But that is why we're playing with the best thing. And there's the unforced error there from Andrew. He still can be tempted into smashing when he should be blocking. So a 3 1 1. And good pace there, forcing again the ball returned long. What we're seeing now though is very fast rallies, maybe five, six, seven shots. We had one big dinking rally, which was great, but as I sort of expected to start, they're gonna be relatively short, purely because I said power is the aim, yeah. aim of their games in a minute. But one thing that I would want to comment on is that even though Andrew's power is fantastic, one thing he perhaps doesn't give is, is, is reset. Right. Is when it is getting banded in, just slow it down and wait for a better opportunity right. to then bang it again. 
um, because even if you have the power to do so, it's not necessarily always the right thing to do. Right, exactly. And very interesting also that although he's very good at reactive stuff, his footwork yet isn't at the level that he would like it to be, and sometimes he can be outmaneuvered. Yeah. It's a great pickup. Yeah, well played. Oh, there, the rare unforced error from yeah. James. So, 3-3. Three, three. Oh. oh, very lucky little dribble over the net there. I actually played against Daniel yesterday in singles. One thing I said, I've never played against him before, but he has one of the most spectacular forehands I have ever seen. He runs around it and you think, I'll get to him, but every single time he will slam it back at you uh, and has a sensational dribble forehand. Sensational, as we see again. There, James poaching across, but you know, we had great lesson with Louis and Thaddea the beginning of the session and stopped us from lunging and you saw James lunging unable to control his balance and the, the ball. So 3-5-1. Interesting opening salvos to this match. There's no clear control of the match yet, would you say? No, not, not to one thing if I was Oh, James and Darren, I, I would really be thinking to slow this game down as, as much as I can because I think one thing that we haven't really seen is, is a, a slow approach because we know we have the power, but do they have the patience and the consistency to dink right. and dink and dink? And that's one thing that I would, especially in a game of three, you've got to test the waters, I guess. You've really got to understand what works and, and what because you have the time to do so. Right. So, a nice little recovery from James and Darren. They've come back to five apiece. That's a nice little third shot drop. There's the touch. Good angle though. Oh, of course the tall man can reach. Oh, lovely slippery side spin. Just hitting an angle and of course, Andrew unable to cover that ball. We change at six. Yep, so if you haven't been watching, we've been changing halfway so that both teams have an opportunity to have the same experience of the court throughout the match. And it is different. Uh, whenever you play indoors, it is really important to do so because the light's different, it feels different, um, and it does take a little while to do so. It's only fair that obviously you both get to experience it, but also it's a little mental reset. Is what I've always found is that it's like having a, a timeout in a way because right. you take your time, you walk, you speak to your partner, and then you, you go again. And you get yourself speak positive. Exactly. And tell yourself those one or two little things that you want to focus on. And also, with such a fast paced game as this will be, I will be interested to see how they use their timeouts, especially because, as I said, this is their, their first tournament playing, and it's a very, very tactical thing to do a lot of the time. So you need to be aware of when to use them, how to use them, yeah, because yeah. they do carry a lot of tactical weight, and so that inexperience may might help them. So here we are at 5 6. Great drive. And uh, parity still between these two evenly matched teams at the moment. There's an overhit ball there. So uh, there's a couple of times now we've seen Darren making errors. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he seems to be quite good up at the net, but uh, when forced, uh, when he's deep, he doesn't do as well. He's yeah. good up at the net. I think one thing with this with this ball as well, especially playing with it, is that any slice forehand backhand you hit, um, what you find is that if you get under the ball, flies. It absolutely, absolutely flies. Yeah. And for that reason, I said you need to be. They're very effective, but it's more high risk, high reward in that sense. You have to be so delicate with it. So we're eight six. Sure. There's a lovely little touch from Daniel, and again, good feel. Uh, but as we said earlier, Andrew sometimes just gets tempted into trying to force, yep. and uh, their team seems to be better when Daniel takes control of the yeah, dinking. Definitely. And also, Portlock is maybe a metre away from the kitchen line. If he was that bit closer, he yeah. would have reached in and right. put it away. And that's just that footwork you were speaking about as well. And also, as you said, Peter, earlier, you've just got to put the time in. Yeah, of course and you become much more aware of your surroundings and more precise, aware of these little details. Yeah. Here we are at uh, 861. 
Nice little slice, side slice there from James. Once again, oh, a little over hit. Good shot. He's hit a reset. Good lock. There's a nice little touch. There's that sudden power from Paul. Now they're in. But yet again, still standing quite far away from the kitchen line. Yeah, yeah. And it, even wow. Daniel that time was quite yeah. a long way. I but mean, when, I think they felt threatened, didn't they? It's exactly that. You'll see some of the best players in America when you win these five acts with these sort of massive volley rallies, they will stand a metre behind because it gives you that extra little bit of time to react. And that is important. Um, so, daylight suddenly appearing on behalf of Portlock and Wren. 10 6, game ball. Oh, and the little net cord bringing the winning point for the game. So that's the first game. 11-6 to Daniel Wren and Andrew Portlock. And uh, what did you think about uh, the, uh, the defence there of uh, Chowdhury and uh, Walsh? I think that, as I said about Portlock earlier, is that he occasionally needs to reset. I'd say exactly the same about, about James Darren. That, that in that situation, he, they're getting banged at and banged at. All you need is a little reset, bring them into the net so they don't have the time, they can't stand a metre away, and get them dinking. How many dinking rounds have we had? Maybe two, maybe right, three? Right. And that's something that, as you said, you can get quite impatient. And that is what will cut someone up. This is about a lot of the time you win people games, not necessarily winning, but the other team losing and making that mistake. And that comes from your patience. But as we really thought, very fast, very fast paced, not long rallies at all. Um, and for that reason, I think that probably a fair outcome because of how many unforced errors um, they made. But um, yeah, I said, if the other game went, next game went 11 60 the way, you wouldn't be surprised. No, exactly. Really interesting, early in the match, we did see a little dink rally, yeah. and James showed that he is a, a, a competent dinker. Very much so. Right. I can only think that there's a little bit of nervousness in a gold medal match, and they have not really thought through their tactics. But, but also, I think there's a little bit of confidence there as well. Not, maybe not arrogance is the right word, but when you get banged at, you feel quite obliged to bang back at them. All right. Well, there, a lovely dink from Daniel Wren, bringing the big man, Duncan Walsh, right up and setting up Andrew Portlock, who just beamed the ball straight into his body. Be beautifully set up point. Again, that slowing down, half volley, trying to get it into the net, and it's where Portlock will, 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 will falter occasionally, and that's where they need, to, they need to slow it down. They need to be having rallies that are... 15, 20 shots, not five or six, because five or six is somewhat of a lot of whereas they can dictate the pace through dinking, which as we know, they're very much, they're, they're better at. So here we are, still at 0-0. Zero, zero. Another lovely little touch, bringing the big man up. That time he dinked, much more sensible. And a little down. technical point, um, Peter. Um, you know, I see big men trying to bend from the waist to get down instead of bending from the knees. What, what's your thought on if you're going to continue to dink, getting underneath the ball to lift it up? So important. I think I said you have that high advantage. Your reach advantage is, is huge. And I think if you don't use that properly by not using your knees, you're mitigating that to somewhat. Uh, and for that reason, I think it's just perhaps some tiredness, perhaps some, some, some laziness. And yet again, that inexperience of, of what's best to do. Right, exactly. Well, 2-0-2, two, two, so a, a little lead opened up by the, the team that's behind. A very short smash there by Daniel, didn't get the length enough. That's better length. Good reset. Look at that lovely little touch. Oh, and I'm not sure he needed to go no. along there. But fortunately... That's the third unforced error I've seen from James, which I think is indicative of uh, the situation, because if you said, he doesn't make many errors. I think that's, that's tiredness that's playing all day, but also that's the, the pressure. I yeah. think that's uh, that little bit of experience yet again coming in because finals are scary. Plain yeah. and simple. Well, that this was good. You, you saw, uh, oh, what a great dink. Wrong way, falling over, and again, tremendous defence there from Daniel Wren and Portlock very sensibly leaving yeah. the dinking game to his partner this is it keep your cool don't make the mistake 
these are the rallies you hate oh. to lose. Well played. Waited great and waited and waited the opportunity. Didn't slap at it. Um, maybe in that rally, and maybe two or three of standard drives were going wrong. And that the experience of not knowing that and not knowing where um, you should have your body, because from that point could be made a lot, lot easier. James. But that, of course, is still a great advertisement for the sport of pickleball. Of That's course. what can happen. And if you aren't a pickleball player and you're watching, hopefully this is enticing you to think what incredible variety there is in this sport. I need to get involved. I played tennis from when I was three to when I was 18, and I wish I never played tennis. Put it like that. Um, but no, There's so good. much in this sport, not only in the sporting contest itself, but the community, the culture, it's just wonderful. I competed at quite a high level in football and tennis and said that I've never come across a culture, a community like it. The best thing about it is that everyone's lovely, everyone wants to win, but the important bit is being here, enjoying yourself. Great and exchange here. Oh, great hands there by Portlock, using touch instead of power. Great defence. Short smash, easily defended. Yeah. Nice. Oh, now. So Andrew will be a bit disappointed with that. But again, intelligence from James, and that's that now, so playing tennis for so long. Okay. Close, but uh, again, perhaps the wrong decision there. So one, two. Lovely touch. Uh, now, what would you expect from Andrew as he gets better there? I think it's better there. I think that I said there's no need to, to, to smash it that to right, rush right. it. He's got unbelievable hands. And all he's got to do is hit a little reset, get it back in the kitchen, get back into a dinking rally and right. wait for an opportunity. I said it is just about patience. The first right. thing I was ever really taught about pickleball was just you have to be patient. And so hopefully these players, uh, I'm lucky enough to be a commentator for international squash, and a lot of the players re-watch the commentated matches and always come and say thanks so much for pointing this stuff out this stuff i can work on i hope that we're of service to these budding players and they'll go back and listen to your comments and uh, you know think well yeah, i can reset that point yeah. good control again that short short smash is very returnable Good consistency though, good pressure. Yeah, smashing on these courts with this ball, it slows it down so much. It's yeah. so hard to put it away um, because there's no skid, it just sits up. Now it was really interesting watching Thaddea earlier and she was smashing with skid deep and was almost irretrievable. Thaddea Lock is a class act. I played against her yesterday in our final and the power she gets in the ball is just immense. So here we are, 3 1. Duncan Walsh. Good shot. Darren Walsh, sorry. Serving there. 3 1 2, James serving. Again, very close. Same as last game. Very uncharacteristic for Daniel. He usually goes to the reset there. Um, he smashes, I noticed, from three quarter court more mm -hmm. than he does up front. Yeah. I think it's because he's got the time to get the ball up and down. Yeah. Um, but also, what I'm sort of trying to think now is that from an analysis point of view is that the firefight is, they're both very, very good at it, but it'll go either way. Whereas I haven't seen really any dinking rallies between Portlock or either of those two. No. And they haven't, they haven't tried it no. either. I'm, and, but I, I did notice Portlock leaving dinking mm -hmm. to Daniel, which I thought was very wise. Yeah. Oh, that's a great response there. You know, in, in all our racket sports, if you inject pace, you have to remember you're decreasing your own recovery time. And we're seeing that quite often. You know, there we saw Darren Walsh attack, but the, because the defense came back quickly, he wasn't ready for it. Yeah. 
it's kind of like lawyers, you mustn't ask a question you don't know the answer to, and it's the same thing in our sports. Exactly. And that's why you're seeing so many shots being hit in the net. Because it's just pure reaction time. Right. And that's where you're in. Pace and reaction time. But I said, if I was James and Aaron, I'd really be trying to get into Dink to um, to or just see what he's got. I haven't yeah. seen I haven't seen him at Dink yet. Exactly. So, you know, you'd think that the least sensible procedure against Andrew Pock, Portlock is to try an, a power match. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, for all, it's very tight. You want to slow it down as much as you can to take the pace out of the ball, because they're both, because they're both at the ball incredibly hard. But James and, and Darren have the, the touch. They both, they both do, but I think that is the way they can take control and keep control. So 4-5-1, very even Stevens at the moment. A few errors creeping in though. Uh, that's James' error a minute ago and now Darren an error. And another one smacks a little bit of you know, losing their way mentally, not sure what to do. This is, if they lose the next point, this is where you take a timeout. You take a reset, but I said they didn't take one in the first game and I can't really see them taking one now. Probably because they're not just aware of it. Yeah, so Peter, just explain the timeout rule. So it's just where you get 60 seconds to have a drink, settle down, but what you'll see is it's not necessarily about having a break, it's more about breaking up the points when I said, pickleball is so much about momentum that if you can break up that momentum it's so often that you will win the next point after taking your time out um, because you've ruined that momentum for someone. So I think that I said they are used very, very tactically um, and if I was was, um, was James and Aaron now, I would, I would definitely use the time out. That was, that was out. That was out. Clearly out. That was out. But the discussion was held in, you know, amicable spirit. We sorted out. Run. That one. Good get. Go, yeah, well played. Nice. Moving him around really, really well. And that's not something you've seen a lot of people able to do to James. He's, he's an athlete. Yeah. Um, and very rare, it looks like he's working a bit of a sweat. But I think now Daniel is moving him around incredibly well. Good lead. Yeah, so I, you know, I'd be very interested to see what Andrew Portlock looks like in a year from now because I, I, I feel as though he's got some really good things in this game, but some obvious things that could be improved. So it's quite exciting to see his development. Anyone with wonderful hands and wonderful power. You can you can train the rest. That's not that's natural. What he's got, that just speed and that power. Yeah. Um, and therefore, I said, if you can teach him to, to reset and slow things down when he needs to, oh, he'd be demon slayer. He already is, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and I, if I was training him, I would be working on his movement. Mm -hmm. I'd be working on his flexibility. Teach him how to bend his knees and mm -hmm. get low because he tends to bend from the waist mm -hmm. um, and if he gets a little lighter on his feet he's going to be able to improve his dink game because as you know weight transference is what's required for dinking you've got to have full balance and be able to transfer your weight if you're leaning and dinking i'm afraid half of your efforts going into falling over <laughs> believe we're at six five one just change sides again that's a little cut. Great coverage by James though, and it's too much, oh. trying to force it. Great turn of pace there from Darren, He's such a tall man that he can shift. So I think the score five, is slightly wrong, 7-5-2, and there's the unforced error again. So you've seen James a couple of times make errors and sort of blink, clearly isn't his usual MO, but uh, finals do funny things to you. Good defense from Daniel there. Good oh. reset, there we go, in the net. That's such a good angle there okay. from Darren though. If you can turn your man round in pickleball, it's very difficult to come back. Yes, it is. 
Great return. Oh, that's strong. The aim there, obviously, is to keep someone at the back of the court. If you get a deep return and they can't come into there, you need to keep them there, keep them there, keep them there. Because, as I said, when you lose a point, it's at the net, not when they're at the back of the court. Very good depth on that return there from Daniel. Good counter there from Darren. Goodness me. They've got some momentum now. Yes, a little bit of daylight. 8-5-1. Great shot from Daniel. Just changed the direction, didn't he? And, and uh, surprised Darren. Darren was pushing in, Daniel saw it, redirected him. Oh, at the body. Touch of the Andrew Portlocks from Darren there. Eh? Well, he's learning. Yeah. Powerful, deep return there. Oh, what a good return there from James. Great reset from Daniel. Now they slow it down. Yeah, well played. Right, Andrew didn't move his feet there. He was very lucky to get away with that. Do you see how he reached across himself instead yeah, of follow. being light on the toes? It's a risk. I said someone can get really good at it, but it's a shot you need to, you want to use when you need to use it, when you're in trouble, not right. all the time. Sudden hands again. Lovely touch. So there's a little bit of desperate forcing going on here from Portlock and Wren. They're re he's reaching. Yeah. And that is where I said, for whatever reason, I said he doesn't want to ding, but also they don't want to make him ding. And that's what I, I, I'm really struggling to understand. understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So but, we're at 792. However, I think it is quite easy for us to stand up here and say that. When yeah, you're in yeah. there, you've Absolutely. got adrenaline. Absolutely. It's much harder to think as clearly. But of course, it's great to have stuff to work on and go away and really work on it. And, you know, as much as we love to play games, finding drills and practices that can help us is so important. Great hands. Uh, there was the first real firefight that we've seen. Again, the natural way to link is cross court, James didn't even hit it to, to, to Portlock, so I'm just... See, overreaching, yeah. And that's why, if I was training him, I'd be really working on that footwork, agility. You know, get the agility ladder out, and let's see if we can do side-to-side -side movement. <laughs> that's a shot. Yeah, lovely depth. Just, I love to see it when just a little hold and then a push the extra yard makes people twist and turn. Exactly. And that's the aim of the game. I said, if you keep someone back, you're going to win. Simple as that. Well, here we are. Seven ten. Ten seven. Ten seven. Oh. Oh, let's go back. Lovely boots. Now they're waiting. Oh. Great, great, great. Oh, great. Oh, wow. Well, that was a great game, wasn't it? And what, what they're doing there is waiting. And the reason they're back is they're waiting for an opportunity to come in. Because if you run in while someone's banging at you, you're not going to get it back. So that is where, you, again, you need a third shot, you need a, you need a drop. Yeah. Um, or an excellent drive. But as I said, against these two, you don't really want to be driving. OK. Ooh. So... Very unusual for Daniel. He was still moving when he tried to play that shot. And so his weight transference isn't going to control. 7 10 2. Ooh, trouble. Great recovery. Okay. Too much. James thought it was game. <laughs> he was excited. Game point. And someone. Oh, again, got him coming forwards and backwards. Oh, great hands. L little flick around the side there. That was good. 
James just, as I said, it, it's margin in this game and James just popped up a little bit too high and Daniel was always going to hit that, always. Oh, the first time Daniel's touch has let him down really and that's game. One so on. it's evenly poised. Yeah. So, um, Peter, um, just give us a quick summation of each of the players' strengths and weaknesses. Ooh, well, as I said, I think that starting with James' touch, immaculate consistency, apart from something we've seen, um, is incredibly good as well. But I think, as I said, he's got great hands. Uh, they both have um, some arrow. I think, obviously, his reach is something that I've seen as a when watching him earlier, he will get to balls that a lot of you and I would have to shuffle over right, to get yeah, him yeah, and just yeah. reach and pop back. And that's why for someone like him, he needs to stay in points. He will just yeah, stay in yeah, points yeah, and yeah. he will get opportunities because yeah. of he's got the reach and it's yeah. so good. Um, and so their drives are still good and they need the fast hands to, to against them. So for Daniel, as I said earlier, his forehand is power. It comes down. I played against, against him earlier. The first drive he hit literally flew past me and in because I just didn't see it. Um, and yeah, again, he said he has that power matched with a good touch um, and some really good hands. Same with um, Andrew Port, like I said, wonderful hands, wonderful speed. And I said that, 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 that weight distribution to create power um, in such a short space of time is just such a, a useful weapon to have. So 0, zero 2 and immediately losing the service. Um, well, what do we need to see from Portlock and Wren if they're going to take this game and take the advantage again? I think they need to, if I was them, I would be trying to speed it up as much as I could to, to Daryl, purely because it's a lot of the time he put back in, into the net and that is just from, from, from pace. And I think that is it, if Daniel gets into a Dinkin rally, he'll be absolutely fine. But um, I'm not sure Portlock is as confident. I'm not sure why James is so far back at the minute. There we go, come in. I said, James needs to go for the net there. If James is there, he hits a better shot back, he doesn't pop it up, and um, they're back in the point. But no, I would be trying to speed it up um, yeah. if I then, because the, the best thing is, is, is power and hands, and um, a lot of, of, of force there, as I would say, have, have, have occurred from the big drives and, and speeding up from James and Noel. So that's what I would be doing. Well, let's see what ensues here. Um, all square at the moment. Zero, zero, two. Big serve. And, it, and it's so fast, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you just don't expect it to no. come off of that tiny little movement. It's Still at zero, 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 one. So. <laughs> yeah, and by keeping them deep, you can see that Daryl is not quite as confident when he's wet back there. He's great up at the net, but back there, it's not his strength particularly. It's hard, to put simply, isn't it? It's just harder because you've got the pressure of, I need to get it in the kitchen or it's gonna get banged at me again. Yeah. And that is why you see quite a lot of third shots put into Ooh, the net. a little touch there from Andrew Portlock. First time we've seen is the that sort of dink inside out. That maybe, it, maybe it is in there. I wanna see it if it is yeah, in there. Yeah, absolutely. Because if he's got that with the power, does it hurt? Really for weapon. That could be his new pickleball name, the <laughs> Lethal <laughs> Weapon. <laughs> I hope he likes it. Sharp. Oh, right at the feet, almost impossible to deal with. So zeroes still. He has got a great serve with a little curve on it. Again, we're seeing that drive back end of the net. And that's something that we keep seeing and something that I would be targeting. Good power. Oh. Now that was the time to be more judicious. And again, the thing about it is that a lot of his drives would go out. Maybe 50% of them, but a lot of the time you simply can't get out of the way. Great hands. Great hands. Again, need a reset. You're not going to win that a lot of the time against someone with those hands and that power. And you just get drawn in. That's better. A little touch. Lovely third shot. Oh, and you can't get out of the way, can you? No. Again, it's definitely going out, but when it's hit with that much venom, you can't yeah, get yeah. it out. And, you know, 
we should give Andrew a lot of credit as well because it isn't easy to control the accuracy of a pickleball at somebody of with that consistency. Not. I don't give a huge amount of credit. It's so horrible to play against. It genuinely is. Well played there. So at this point in time, it's sort of looking like Andrew is being the stronger player with uh, Daniel a bit out of it at the moment. Andrew will win more points. Daniel is definitely obviously the most consistent, but you that's He'll a, set that, points up. Exactly, and that's what makes a, a good team. Is that, so yeah. You need someone who will win points, you need someone who will keep you in a point to help the other person. So it is, obviously it's a team game anyway, but it really is about knowing what your partner does well and not well, and, yeah. and, and that's what it comes down to a lot of the time. So necessary to play regularly with each other and oh, just yeah. learn, you know, by osmosis almost, what the other person does. Unforced error again. Look at that tiredness is just creeping in now. Come on, four. Yeah. I think that one probably would have gone out. Yep. Oh, Again. But that's very, very good. Dangerous. It's never scary. Nice. Never nice. Very, very one good. Face. Two. Two one. Two one. One. I think Andrew said two zero one, but I don't think it was. I think it was two one. It's definitely yeah. We definitely got one. Yeah. Two one two. Inside out swing on that serve. That looked like it just about caught the just outside about. line. Such a graceful player is John. Yeah. Again, that's probably where you see a, a third shot drop, not necessarily a drive. Um, that said, it's, it's very hard to, to do that once when you're in this sort of banging yeah, mindset. Yeah. But there from Portlock, again, it wasn't just power, but it was skidding power right towards the feet in the middle. I mean, difficult to deal with. Good shot. Sliding wide that time. If I was James and Darren right now, I would be trying my absolute best to get Andrew to bend down. Yeah, get well, him he bending. doesn't bend, does he? Get him reaching, yeah. get him bending. And forced error, no need for that. Again, trying to bang it, yeah. and there's no need. I would be trying to bring these two to the net, get them in a dinking rally. And, and I would have thought that James has got the skill to do stuff like that, that little stop volley with a little backspin, and you do that towards Andrew, he isn't going to be getting to that He's ball. not. But it's, of course, in the, in the moment, it's difficult it's to remember. hard to do that, But I said, any drive, I would just be killing. I would just be resetting, 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 and trying to get into the running. Right now. Good thinking going on. Good thinking. Yeah, that's hard a little to too fast. That's hard to do. Good oh, shot. real battle of wills. That we love to see it. They are. Who's who's going to be the chicken first? They are or talking the Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Which is surprising. Yeah. Because the net has got a wonderful touch. Well, do you think that psychologically that is the effect that Andrew has had? Is that? It sort of disguised his weakness because they're so frightened of his strength. I think so, and I think what you'll find is that perhaps the reason why they're not is that they will probably, he'll just smack it back and it'll probably hit them again <laughs> a lot of the time. So not only that, not wanting to get hit, but they're so hard to get back. So we may not see him dink regardless because it just isn't his nature to do so because what it does work so well. at 4-1-2. Yeah. Oh, just the risk there. Unnecessary. I, I just feel as though Dan, uh, um, Daniel's a little bit in the wilderness at the moment. He's been sort of out of it for a while and 
has lost his rhythm a little bit. Yeah. See, I think that's where the inexperience creeps in because for that sort of a, one of the things they, they could have run into the net straight away. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't, and then they got banged out, and then there's the point. I think that's the inexperience creeping in. So that's now two unforced errors from Daniel there. Uh, uncharacteristic, he usually plays his touch there. So it's 2 4. Little, little despondent, Daniel. I think I he's so. got to get his body language back up, and he's a great player. He's just got to believe in himself. He looks tired. Yeah, he does. I'm tired watching. Oh. Uh, uh, well now, I, I think that's a tactical error by James. There, they were pressing advantage to get back, and he's given it away. Oh. Um, when you're moving and trying to hit a ball, oh. Off the net core, that's tough thing. But when you're moving and trying to hit a ball at that pace, it, it's hard. We've, we've said before, you know, you've got to bring your balance under control to be able to transfer your weight and control into the ball, not into falling over. Again, that same action of drive, backhand, into the net. So here we are. 6-3. Little time, Peter, to... Uh, use that reset mentality. I think they need it. I said they're getting drawn in again and again and again to this very fast pace. I mean, the, the longest rally we've had in this game was maybe 10, 12 shots, said, and you need to just slow it down. I'd probably get Daniel dinking again. I said, but this, he does seem a bit despondent now, looks a bit tired, so really test him, make sure he, he's concentrating. Right. Um, and, that, and that's what I'd be doing. I'd, I'd be putting him under, under pressure and retargeting him. I, I wouldn't hit the ball to um, to Andrew, and I said that's a, a part of our game that, that people use a lot, and said it's something that you can't be afraid to use. Right, right, right. You know, uh, when you when you watch Ben Johns and his partner playing their great matches, sometimes they extend the rally so their opponents really are questioning their reason to live. You know, it, it just goes on and on and on and on. And I suspect we'll see that happen in England because uh, the improvement of the game, yeah. from what I've heard, even over the last two years, has been quite Massive. a lot. But the reason you see those points go on for so long is because they reset yeah. time and time. And they're not, they are incredibly patient. Good shot for James. Yeah. Not too much power, just great placement. Misjudgment there. So seven three. Oh, yeah. Now there's the footwork and the balance, and he can improve that. Oh, most certainly. That's just yeah. He's just reaching. I mean, like, if I was advising him, I would say, you know, hire Louis. Just get Louis working you and teaching you how to move. And, uh, you could improve that so much. Oh no. Well, that, that, that was maybe one step to take to, yeah, yeah. to get it back. But even even then, so they were standing at the back of the court. That was tennis. Yeah. They were just playing. I said that's where probably the time is creeping in, going back to to what they know, which is fine. But against these people, these players, it, it's not really going to win oh, a lot from that. Touch, yeah. oh, dear. Well played. Great reaction. Again, I just feel as though Daniel did one great little dink. And if he'd just reset again, they would have been in charge, but he just risked everything. That's what it is, risk. Uh, intelligent from Darren wanting to bring Andrew into the dinking there. You see how he's getting that little side and curve on it to take it into Andrew's body. And he knows he doesn't bend. And when you hit that, that third shot, when it is being top spin to come down the ball, he can't hit the shot that he loves so much of that right, because exactly. it will go in the net or it will go out. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So a little bit of a comeback to uh, even Stevens almost here in this very important third game. 6-7. Uh-oh. 
Oh, oh, that's great. That's great. The shot that set it up almost went out, but it was just such a good length. There was very little that James and Darren could do about it. Oh, oh I'm hate that. error. You My hate coach in the that. States called serving out dumb one, <laughs> returning into the net dumb one A. That's a shot. And I have to say, yeah. I am dumb one. <laughs> Often. And, and that is just James moving him around, turning him around as you said, pot it up, put it away. It's about setting up yourself or setting up your partner, and that's what he did. Six seven. Now you need to slow this down. Oh, just out. Just out. However, can I just say as well that as finals go, it's very rare they're this. Fantastic to watch, but also <laughs> close as well. Exactly. Well, what a great advertisement for our sport. Of course. Great get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seven seven. Nothing to choose between these teams right now. Oh, a great little backhand top spin down the middle. They need to get, James and Darren need to get into the net faster and more consistently. Right. So Darren is getting a habit now of standing at the back. Yeah. If, that was, if I was James, I would be shouting at him to get forward. Good length, having said that from Darren on that Fantastic. return. Again, Andrew Port, look, sudden smash straight at your face. What do you do? Again, going out, and there's nothing you can do. Hit the ball or it hits your face. Yeah. Nine, seven, a little, little creeping ahead here. And for some of you watching this who play tennis, and any serves you see that clip the net cord and go in, that's just a normal serve now. That was a rule change that happened this year. Um, and therefore, I said, it's something that could work very much to your advantage or obviously just um, take it away from you. But just if you were wondering, there's no let. Um, that is just um, a normal serve. And, and of course, everybody that plays pickleball knows this, but those that are new to pickleball, you know, if it goes over the net on the net core but lands in the kitchen, that's no good. Yeah. See, they're really getting in the habit now of standing at the back, and that will just play into their favour because they can just bang it time and time again. They need to slow it down, get into the kitchen, go, sorry, get the ball into the kitchen and get up to the net. So it's 7 9 1. So turn and turn again. James and Darren coming back a little bit. Sorry, yeah. 892, eight, not 891. 992. Nine, yeah, very tight. It's what we might call squeaky bum time. Momentum is so key though. Oh, it's good, a good rushing attack there. Not, not what you'd necessarily recommend, but James pulled it off really well. That is what we would call a poach. Yeah. And you see a lot more mixed doubles tomorrow. Um, but when you do it occasionally in men's doubles, it works so well because you just don't know what's coming. Oh, again, that sudden speed. You know, it's quite interesting to see the tennis, the ex tennis player against the ex table tennis player. You must have wrists of steel. Footwork. But not only wrists of steel, but tremendous timing. And that's sometimes oh, yeah. what people don't understand. It's not just about power, it's that skillful precision. Oh, oh yeah, don't, work. don't take it away from just how hard it is what yeah, he yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. Because I can do that, I've been playing for a long time, and that is just timing, technique, and doing that shot for a number of Meanwhile, 10-9. Game and match, what an amazing turnaround there from James and Darren. 
and uh, I, I think we saw towards the end that Daniel's tiredness really playing a big part and uh, speeding up the, the the penetration and depth from from Daniel and from Darren and uh, James, as you had suggested, really started to pay off. Yeah, I think I said that's just tiredness because I said the, the, the game one Daniel and the game three they were, were very very different um, and um, no they at the end I think they um, did revert to type a little bit with the um, with the power game and the, and the drives but it, it worked because I said they just sent the tiredness and saw it working and, and carried on so well done to, to, to James and Darren in their first tournament. Well that's a fantastic result and thanks so much to you Peter for coming and being our analyst and helping us understand the game a little bit more. A pleasure. And uh, hope to see you some more. But meanwhile, you know, thanks for joining us here at Bolton Arena. And uh, we move on to next matches very shortly.